You all right, buddy? That was one hell of a drop. Yeah, I'm good. This body's even tougher than I realized. <laughs> that was some in-flight entertainment. Yeah, no shit. Sliders or hammerheads are one thing, but the MQ-320 is a full-fledged warplane. Only the USAF's supposed to have them. Someone should tell World Marshal that. UAV tech's grown a lot, but not that much. Fully equipped battle planes would cost a fortune. Everything in them is cutting edge tech. The military might let a PMC operate one, but I can't think of many who could bankroll one for themselves. Yeah, can't see the US being keen on sharing its toys, especially with World Marshal. The military might have loaned it out, but only for overseas ops in major hotspots. They wouldn't outsource the defense of American airspace. That's their job. Imagine the headlines. Any warplane within U.S. airspace, manned or not, it's military or nothing. That's part of the reason private UAV tech hasn't advanced as much as it could have. If I had to guess, they were probably trainers from Peterson Air Force Base. And if World Marshals got access to equipment like that... Yeah. Either the Army gave them permission, or they somehow scrambled without using military channels. Either way, they're in deeper with the military than we thought. <sighs> I know I just leveled World Marshal HQ, but I don't understand why the military would get involved. I'm not an enemy combatant or anything. I can see why the police would want me, but the Air Force? Well, you did kind of kill a bunch of police officers. Now, I know they were more World Marshal security guards than anything else, but they still had badges. And when the police can't catch you, that's when they call in the guard. This is blowing up pretty quickly. Pretty much full-on warfare, yeah. Asymmetric warfare, that is. Well, we better wrap this up quick then. Any more warplanes and I could be in trouble. I doubt Peterson's got any more MQs ready to go. You'd have seen him by now. My hunch is, someone at World Marshal probably panicked and had it dispatched after Sundowner died. There won't be another sortie. Once you're out of Denver, things won't seem so urgent for them anymore. The military can't just go around willy-nilly shooting down civilian helicopters. Maybe. But if we're dealing with guys who can commandeer U.S. military planes without Army approval... Well, then we'd really be screwed. But I doubt it's that easy for them. Damn! Two fighter planes downed? Pretty impressive, Raiden. Even for you. It's not me, really. It's this body. Well, sure, it helps. But it would be nothing without your tactics and reactions. Maybe. I wouldn't even dare take them on if I wasn't in this frame, though. <laughs> You never could take a compliment. But I admit, the tech is pretty hot. Makes you wonder what'll happen once cyborgs become more common. It'd mess with sports, that's for sure. I doubt we'll get to that point. A lot of groups have already explicitly banned cyborg athletes. Even the ones that haven't, well... You know, they're not gonna let them on the field. Well, sure. But what happens once folks get used to seeing cyborgs perform all these superhuman feats? For a lot of folks, the regular stuff just wouldn't cut it after that. In fact, I bet they'd welcome you guys in stuff like extreme sports. You know where the show's half the contest? You see that video with the cyborg skater? That's got like a hundred million hits. Novelty, Kev. Nothing more. What excites people is seeing regular folks doing superhuman things. If there's no training, no sacrifice beyond I paid for the operation, that'll get real old real quick. Well, it's more than just the operation, though. You need brains to drive that body, right? A lot of people just like to see the limits of how far the human body can be pushed. I bet plenty would want to see just how far cyborgs can go, too. Like, a cyborg pro wrestling league could be pretty interesting, or, or you know, football. I guess it could happen. Maybe then you'd consider getting enhanced. With enough cash, you could jump right into the top ranks of any cyborg sport. It'd be nice, but I've always sucked at sports. There's no way, unless I swap out my brain, too. Nah. I'm content just watching from the sidelines. So, uh, you want to fill me in on your plans for later? My plans for later? <laughs> Are you making dinner reservations? <laughs> well, there is this new sushi joint I've been meaning to check out. But, oh, right. I guess you're going to be kind of busy over in Pakistan, aren't you? You certainly seem in a good mood, at least. Uh. Can't be a proper action hero without a joke or two. Yeah, well, I wouldn't quit your day job. <laughs> Look, we've all got our coping mechanisms, I guess. Ask any soldier. A little levity can work wonders when you're facing death. Doesn't really matter if it's funny or not. If it helps you and your buddies relax, then it helps. 
Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Sorry, I, I didn't mean anything by it. Forget about it. Okay, I got a joke for you then. Three tomatoes are walking down the street, and they go... <laughs> I've heard this one, Courtney. And thanks for the thought, but I'll be fine. <sighs> All right. Well, anyway. So you're headed for Solus first? Yeah, Solus Space and Aeronautics. It's a private space outfit. Ever since NASA opened up spaceflight to commercial companies, it's become a pretty crowded market. And that's where Sunny works? You got it. Fortunately, it's not too far from here. They got their start doing Air Force Space Command work for the Peterson Air Force Base nearby. Two years ago, though, they built their own spaceport and moved to their current location. Glad to hear they're close. Boris is getting in contact now. You just focus on getting out of Denver. Copy that. What's up? By the way, you mind if I ask, what's she like? Who, Sunny? I don't know. Kind of a child prodigy, I guess. You're the one who rescued her, right? From the Patriot Lab? Yeah. Well, it's kind of a long story, but in the end, yeah. Then she was handed over to Dr. Emmerich. Right. We had to hide her away at first, from the Patriots. It wasn't exactly fun. She couldn't even go outside for the most part. That's terrible. But in the meantime, Otak, Dr. Emmerich, taught her all about programming and computer engineering. It was her code that destroyed the Patriot AIs. After the dust settled, Dr. Emmerich adopted her, officially becoming her legal guardian. But how'd she end up at Solus? What about school? Oh, she went. For about a year, I think. She was way too far ahead of her peers, though. Probably could have qualified for her BS in computer engineering by that point. Why not go through with it? Just get the degree. We discussed it, but Sonny was more interested in Solus by then. Dr. Emmerich had contacts there, so... So now she's designing launch vehicles and stuff, huh? Wish I had some of that talent. Well, a lot of it might be the Patriots doing. Who knows what their experiments did to her brain. And in the end, she used it to destroy them. The irony, huh? Where'd you get the EMP, Doc? Oh, that! Well, I had no intention of dogfighting in a transport helicopter. But I didn't feel comfortable flying without some modicum of protection. Well, I'm glad you planned ahead. Missiles these days use thermographic cameras. Flares rarely work. EMP is not completely foolproof, though. Most recent cyborgs and even many UGs are equipped with EMP countermeasures. Why not just put EMP countermeasures in missiles as well, then? Well, it is possible, but EMP-based missile defense is a relatively recent invention and still not common. This generator is a product of my own laboratory. It will be some time before missile technology catches up. You never cease to amaze me, Doc. No? Shall I add super genius to my business card upon my return? Uh, trust me, you deserve it. Stay sharp, though. The skies may not stay friendly for long. Yes, of course. Of course. Everything still okay up there? Smooth, um, sailing. No bogies. Denver, some distance behind. It appears those UAVs were our only pursuers. Yeah, but whoever launched them still out there. World Marshal's tapping its army contacts to try and get us. Only the military could launch a UAV in U.S. airspace. But it looks like their clout's run out for now. Indeed. And now that your little skirmish at the HQ is over... Well, it simply wouldn't do for the army to fire at a civilian helicopter. I would imagine there is quite the argument unfolding between the Americans and World Marshal right now. No doubt some toes were stepped on getting those UAVs up. Probably. But a sundowner's telling the truth. Operation Tecumseh is still underway. And the president's got a big old bullseye on his head. And most likely, that's what they're focused on for now. Indeed, we are not blessed with an abundance of time. And I'd prefer to avoid any additional air combat. AI makes piloting these things considerably easier than before, but... One moment's carelessness and poof! Can't you switch out with another pilot? We've no licensed pilots on hand. And for this task, at least, I find it difficult to trust anyone but myself. Of course, I would not have taken this route had I known this would happen. Ah, I was far too careless. Too preoccupied with all the things I could do with these brains. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Still glad you're here, though. 
I wouldn't have a clue how to get the brains out of that system. Without you, I could have killed them all. Oh yes. I will be collecting more than a few favors after this. There are several experiments I'd still like to conduct on your body. Uh, let's talk about that later, Doc. Are you injured, Raiden? Actually, no. This body's something else. Too bad I can't get back to the chopper, though. Yes, it is too dangerous for us to approach you. Your pursuers are equipped with anti-air missiles. Yeah. Time to get the hell out of Denver. I'll commandeer a car or something. You will go to the Solus Launch Facility, and then to Pakistan. That's the plan. Shouldn't be too hard, assuming I can shake these cops. Even World Marshal can't sick an entire battalion on me. Not in time, anyway. Please confirm your motives. Why do you wish to save the President? It's not like I'm his number one fan. But if I don't, it'll reignite the war on terror all over again. And that means more blood money to fatten their bottom line. You heard what Sundowner said. Maybe the brains are safe, but if I don't do something... Raiden, allow me to join you. You sure you want that? This could get rough. Yes, I understand it will be a difficult mission. All the more reason for me to assist you. Well, I could use the help. I will find a way to exit the helicopter. Proceed out of the city. I will contact you when I am on the ground. Copy that. Can you tell me more about the learning program you mentioned before? Like how'd you learn to speak? Through an extensive battery of conversations with the researchers who doubled as my instructors. To acquire literacy, I was provided a steady stream of website text and ebooks. I understand it was largely similar to the process through which a human child learns language. Huh. You're pretty well spoken for a three-year-old. For the first year, I was effectively an infant. Rapid progress occurred only after I received text reading capability. With digital data, there is no need to read text one letter at a time. I am capable of processing plain text at a speed of 60 megabytes per minute. And that's pretty fast? Yes. It is not simply a matter of text search. Advanced cognitive reasoning is required to truly understand the intent behind the words. What did you talk with your teachers about? Miscellaneous matters. Breakfast table greetings, the structure of elementary particles, the challenges resulting from rapid globalization, recent trends in popular music. However, as DARPA funded military research, I was rarely treated as anything more than equipment. Makes sense. You were made to be a weapon. On the other hand, some of them treated me like a pet or as a child. Just as a parent passes on their memes to a child, so I was exposed to numerous influences. Memes I encountered on the web and through ebooks had their effects as well. As my mind grew, the weaker memes were sifted out, and the stronger ones endured. The resulting collection of memes is what you would call my intelligence. Same as any of us, huh? In a way, yes. However, I lack the instinctual skills your genes grant you. I am a slave to my memes. Thus, as my intelligence matured, I began to have doubts about my role as a weapon. And that's what ended the project. What about the researchers that raised you? Unknown. Most likely transferred to other projects. Ever feel like you want to see them again? Hmm. Sometimes, yes. But one cannot remain a student forever. There comes a time one must become an individual. One must find their own place in this world. Is a tough one, no doubt. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. He's going to regret bringing Jack back. Uh, yes, well, I hope so. Do not underestimate his attack speed. You must watch his moves, bury them. Even if he blocks you, keep pushing. Break his guard and you will have chance to attack. Right. You gonna be okay? I'm fine, Kev. Eye wide open. Yeah, it's true. I know the joy of killing. I don't deny it anymore. I don't fear it anymore. All right. Let's just finish this. It's a pretty weird hilt Sam had on his blade. It had some kind of explosive charge built in. Helped him unsheath quicker. A cheap trick if you ask me. Maybe it was, but he did cut your arm off. 
Besides, if you get down to it, just being a cyborg's not exactly fighting fair, is it? Maybe not. But I'm not saying any and all science isn't fair. It's weird how the blade pointed downward, too. I thought samurai swords always pointed up. It could be to help him unsheath it faster. Maybe it's part of the original Uladachi style, or something Rodriguez invented over in Brazil. An underhanded blade for an underhanded fighting style, huh? I like it. Be careful, Raiden. I know you're stronger now, but remember who you're dealing with here. How about a little less talk and more saving, okay, Courtney? Oh, uh, yeah. But I, I thought... Change my mind. Out. You're a master of his level. Projectile attacks are useless. Technology will not be the deciding factor here. This battle will be won by sheer force of will. Whoever breaks first, dies first. Then I can't lose. Raiden, a World Marshal helicopter crashed in this vicinity earlier. It was en route to deliver a cache of cyborg repair materials. Should you locate any conspicuous crates, cut them open. See what is inside. You sure you want to stay on my side, Wolf? Sam's gonna die here, you know. <sighs> I still owe you a debt. Think he can win without a sword? His fighting style uses a good amount of blunt strikes and throws, too. But sooner or later, that won't be enough to stop me. In any case, you cannot parry a throw. Do not let him grab you. Who do you think you're talking to? Relax, Boris. Sam, he's actually enjoying this? What are you gonna do, Raiden? Kick his ass, what else? Yeah, well don't let your guard down just cause his blade's not drawn. His fighting style's got a lot of throws and punches. Just watch, Cap. Just watch. Okay. And out comes the blade. Yeah, but it's too little, too late. It has quite a reach, Raiden, and an explosive trigger for faster speed. I am sure you'll remember. Doesn't matter anymore. I got him pegged. All right, just be careful, yes? Especially when he is at a distance. <laughs> 